What is going on, guys? We are back playing some more Create Above and Beyond, and today we're going to be automating the production of kinetic mechanisms. So there is a lot of work that we're going to have to take care of in today's episode, since the plan is essentially to complete all of chapter one, so all the requirements to fully automate the kinetic mechanism production in one single episode. And if you don't understand the size of that task, I'll be going over it in a second when we look at the quest book. But before we get into that, I do want to kind of cover some of the differences around here that you might see from where we left off last episode, which was right over here at the ore processing setup which has grown a little bit if you could not already tell. But basically, you guys in the comments saved me from a total brain fart where I thought I needed the brass funnel to be able to filter out the ingots from the basin once they had been compacted. Turns out that the chute that comes off the basin automatically when a belt starts moving below it is only going to output completed recipes. So that saves us from needing brass to automate the compacting and thus production of ingots. So this chest right here contains pretty much all of my valuables, except things like diamonds and stuff, which don't go through here yet, but it contains all of my metals and we have a decent supply. I haven't really done much more mining after last episode. So this is majority of what I had processed through that we saw in the chest last time, plus the stuff that I manually processed excessively before I did all the crafting and set stuff up which I said I didn't want to do, but I accidentally did it a little bit. But this is what we're left with. So this should suffice for at least a decent amount of time. But I suspect that I'm going to have to set up some automated mining pretty soon for at least some of these like zinc. Zinc is causing me a real problem and you'll see why in a second. But I also set up over here a couple different things, a deployer, a press and then another press for making some of the I'm not going to say miscellaneous stuff that we need because some of it isn't. But we have this basin and press over here, and I think it still has some stuff in it for making rubber. So I just dump some kind of plant in there with water and it will make us rubber that we cook down to make belts. This one is just a press with a depot for making plates of whatever kind of metal I need. And then this one right here is a deployer and a depot for manually making mechanisms. And I have made both kinetic mechanisms in here and precision mechanisms because I have made it into, I guess we'll call it the brass age, uh, as we'll see in a second here. But doing this manually isn't really that hard. So an example here would just be this is one step from being done. I put that there. I throw the saw in there. Boom, it's done. Uh, I guess it had my screwdriver in there from before and we have a kinetic mechanism and then I can grab this out. So it's not automated yet. We'll be doing that today, but this allowed me to make a lot of the stuff in here, which is a bunch of random stuff that we'll be using in today's episode. I didn't really know exactly what we needed because there's a lot of stuff we're going over. So there's some things in here that were excessively crafted, some that I know we need. We're going to have to craft a lot more. But this should be a good place for me to at least come and kind of grab some random stuff from to start the work at least over here, though. This is the main thing I want to discuss really quick. Again, I keep saying that but there's a lot to talk about, but this is going to be the entirety of my brass production and brass age production in general. So we have a smeltery over here from Tinker's Construct. And this is a very basic one, but basically what we do is we put our zinc and our copper in here. And if you don't know, the production of brass is kind of weird because it's going to require sort of a three step process. You need to melt it down for Tinker's construct. You then need to pull it out and put it in a basin and mix it at 30 RPM or greater. You then need to put it back into as molten brass, the um, smeltery, and then you need to put it into a cast of some sort and pull it out. And that's what we end up having here to get our ingots. So pretty lengthy process, but this setup here does a really good job of it. Uh, I fell in my <laughs> water supply, but basically we are, you saw this at the beginning of the episode with me setting it up, but to give a really simple explanation of it, we are pulling out the zinc and copper, which is filtered here with a smart fluid pipe. It goes into a basin, the basin mixes it, it outputs to this basin, which might sound really stupid, but we do it because if you fill up this basin with I guess it would be 992 millibuckets of brass, not a thousand, because based on how much it processes at a time, you end up with 992. And then what happens is if you have copper or zinc still in there, it'll try to pull those out and then it can't because you're filtering out only the brass. And so then your brass will get stuck and the whole system will be stuck. So in this case, what we do to prevent that is we have the basin dump the completed brass into another basin where the only thing in there will be the completed brass 
and then that gets pulled out over here. We don't need a filter because this is its own filter. And then it puts it back into our system and then we can turn it into ingots here. So that is how that works. And then this over here is for making electron tubes, which are needed to upgrade the kinetic mechanism to the precision mechanism, which is required to make brass uh, items, I guess you'd call them. I don't really know. It's the brass machine stuff, just like the andesite version. And to make those, we're going to need our polished rose quartz and then you're going to just take molten iron and use a spout to dump it on them. So they're really easy to make. But here then we have another pump pulling out just iron. And then we have a smart fluid pipe setting it to just be iron into a spout on a depot done. So that is how all of that is completed. And you can see in here, I have a fair bit of brass and then some extra iron. If we wanted to refill this with iron, the one thing you need to know is you need to set it to be the bottom one so that these are set to pull it out. So you just kind of need to manually adjust that, but that's it. So that is a recap on pretty much everything I've done, other than the fact that uh, you might see from my debuff that I did have to kill uh, a patrol that was around here. So I don't have any milk right now. There's no cows on the island left because it's a small island and I murdered all of them, unfortunately. So we're just going to live with that debuff and probably go kill that guy too. But now we should be good to take a look at the quest book. And today we are going to be completing chapter one, which is right here. So I accidentally already clicked complete on some of these, but they're really not. But basically this whole tree right here of quests gets you to completing chapter one when you have automated the production of precision mechanisms from start to finish. And there's four different sub assemblies that you need to get you to that point. So we're going to need a tree farm that's automatic that then has saws that make stripped logs, then into planks, then into uh, slabs. And that's going to be that whole process. Then we need to automatically produce and harvest uh, andesite cobblestone, which we have to do all the way down at bedrock, find a way to move that up to the surface. And then we need to combine that with some sand that we then turn into clay, that we then turn into algae with some kelp that we also automatically farm, which we then cook down and then combine to make our andesite alloy, which then gets put into deployers along with a saw to make the slabs into kinetic mechanisms. So very lengthy process. My mouth is getting dry just talking about it right now because there's so much to talk about. And I'm trying to talk really fast because we got to get through a lot of this. But today we're going to do all of that. So I don't know how long the episode's going to be, but it's probably going to involve a lot more cuts and jumps and all that stuff than normal. I might not explain as much because we're getting this done, but I told you guys we're speeding through this pack. So we are not going to lollygag, which means it is time for us to start setting up the first part of this. OK, so the first thing that we are going to be setting up in today's episode is going to be the kelp farm, which is arguably one of the easier things to set up in this whole mess that we're going to be going over today. But I promise it'll make sense as we progress, because this should give us a good basis for where everything else needs to go in the setup, because it's going to kind of flow into each other as we progress it in this direction, sort of on a it's not going to be a belt system, but it's going to be a processing flow chart esque thing that's going to go over there. So a lot of different stuff's going to be happening, but the items are going to slowly travel to the right directly in front of where this setup is and everything will kind of coalesce into one there. But again, the first thing we need to do is setting up a very simple kelp farm. So we're going to put down a shaft right here because I don't want to have to worry about digging my way up and potentially having water spill on my face and ruining the kelp that we're going to be planting here in a bit. But we're just going to put the shaft there, a bearing on top, radial chassis on top of that. We're going to grab out slime balls. And if you don't know, there is a very easy recipe to get slime balls using create. That's just going to require lime dye, which you can get from flowers, which I got lucky with. And then you can use dough, which you make from wheat and processing that just like you wouldn't ore. And so we're going to use the radial chassis, make it sticky, and then we are going to slap down three mechanical harvesters, which Honestly, it's probably more than we're going to need. The kelp will definitely not be the limiting reactant in this system, but I'm fine with keeping it like this because two kind of looks silly. A radius of two is just really small. So we're going to put them down just like this. You do need blocks behind them to support them when you first put them down, but then we can get rid of them. And a lot of people will have blocks behind these the entire time. And instead of having them press directly against the chassis, they will be one in front. You do not need that. The chassis can hold on to these on its own. It looks a lot nicer 
And it's also going to prevent any issues that you might have when you do farms like this, where sometimes this block on each side of the mechanical bearing won't actually get harvested by these if they are set one forward. So this one, I think, is the ideal setup, but it's becoming nighttime now, so I guess we should probably sleep before we continue. Well, we were definitely on a roll there before the nighttime interrupted us, but to keep going, now we need to put down the onboard storage that will hold on to the kelp before it dumps it off. So two chests is fine. We really only need one, but we're going to have two here because we need to extend this side by two blocks to put down our portable storage interface, which is also going to be three. So setting this to three, we'll hold on to both sides, both arms of this setup. And as it rotates, this will cut them down. This will store and then deposit it right over here. So we need to build up just so that we can get our second portable storage interface on the appropriate level, which can go right here. And the awesome thing is eventually I'm going to put a wall around this, but the portable storage interface can go right through walls because it does not care about the laws of physics, which is great. Now it's going to be glass, so it's going to look really funny when we can see it kind of extending, but it still will and it will dump the items off here. So that is going to be it for the kelp farm. Once we give this rotational power, which I will deal with later, it'll start running. And the only thing we have left to put down is going to be the kelp in the water, which is really annoying to do because obviously you need to fill up this upper level with water and then you need to get the kelp planted down here. So I am going to hop off camera. I'm going to fill this up with water. I'm going to plant the kelp and I'm going to also build up the walls here. Obviously, otherwise the water would be spilling out everywhere and then we can hop back and continue with the process. Okay, guys, so the setup is complete for the kelp farm. As you can see, it is running. It won't drop any items off because we don't have any way to pull them out of the portable storage interface, but it is running. It is collecting the kelp. And as you can see, I did set up my water wheels over here. I have three of them and I did require a couple additional gearboxes compared to if I had set them up, uh, I guess properly pointing towards where the rotational power needed to go, but it looks a lot nicer like this, I think. So totally worth it. But the next thing we need to do is progress on and collect clay because our goal here is obviously to make the andesite alloy. And for that, we need algal bricks and we need the blend then, which comes from mixing clay ball with kelp. So we need to put the kelp into a basin and we need to put a mixer over that. So the logical solution would be to simply come up here by one, put a basin here, put a hopper into it and it should dump the kelp in there. And obviously we will have way more kelp than we need in there, but that should be fine. And now we need to get the clay. And the way that we do that, if we take a look at our quest book, because if we go over here, the kelp is done. Uh, this one is actually properly checked off being done, but the next one is automating the production of sand, which we will then wash. And so we're going to end up wanting a depot that's going to push into this basin and so I think we should have one of these over here. Do I have an additional depot somewhere? No. OK, well, then let's look at the recipe. How do I make this andesite casing and andesite alloy? Do I have both of those? I do. Nice. We get a depot and this is where we need to use our brass machines. So we need to take this not in a crafting table, still getting used to this, but we need to make brass funnels. So there we go. Putting the brass to good use because what we're going to do is put down our depot. Nope, that's too high. Put down our depot. Did it go in here? It did. And we just pulled out our kelp, didn't we? Yeah, well, whatever. But we'll put that there. And then we're actually going to put a brass funnel that goes into here. And we're going to set a filter. And it needs to be set to clay. So I have clay over here somewhere. There we go. We're going to set the filter to clay. And then we need to put down a set of glass over this. And so we're just going to, um, yeah, we need to come up one more on top of this, put down some dirt right here. And then we need to put down glass right here. We're going to put down our mechanical mixer on top of this. It can go through glass. So that's fine there. Then we need to put down glass, at least for now, glass right there, glass right there. And then we need to put down an encased fan right on top of this pointing down. So this will do the washing. The water is going to end up going there. And then we are going to put down more water right above next or next to this too. And so we're not going to close off this side because we are going to put down our strainer right here. And then we're going to take a hopper 
and put it down here. So I think I need to make another hopper, probably. As you can see, my inventory is a total mess right now. I'm gonna make a couple chests because we keep making hoppers and I'm gonna make, there we go. I'm gonna make four just in case we need them for something else today. But we're gonna put down our hopper here, which will dump whatever we get from the strainer into here. Now the strainer is going to be able to give us a couple things and do I have it on me? Oh my gosh, there's so many things that we need today. I have it over here. So we need a sediment strainer for this. So admittedly, this is the one part of this setup that is not fully automated, but this one, we can make a bunch of these and use another hopper to push them into the strainer, but basically it gets 300 uses and it's gonna give us a chance of getting sand, white sand, orange sand, or clay. Now, all of the sand, no matter what color, gets washed into clay. So basically what'll happen here is we put the strainer in here and then we put water up there so we're gonna have to enclose this again and i don't know if we can click on that so let's just put dirt here and then it is going to automatically collect either sand for us or clay if it's sand here it'll get washed then go in there if it's clay it'll automatically go in there and then all we got to do is put water down up here and technically we don't need to put more water down right here we could just leave it as flowing water but i don't really want to do that uh, it looks nicer like this. And as you can see, the sand has ended up here. So all we need to do then is bring rotational power up here to get this to start running. But I am going to assemble the next step of this before we actually do that, because once we get out the blend, if we take a look again at the recipe for this, once we get out the blend, we need to bulk blast it down into the brick form, which means we are going to need uh, another depot and another encased fan. So I'm gonna grab out all the stuff that we're gonna need to do that. So I'm not running back and forth constantly. And then we can come set that up. Okay, so I think I have everything we need. I'm probably going to regret saying that because it'll probably be totally incorrect in a second here. But I think all we need to do is put a depot down here. Now this shoot should, like I said, only eject completed recipes from here. And so I think we might still be able to have another brass funnel on the other side of this. I don't know but we might be able to. So that should probably be the first thing that we test before we set the rest of this up. So this is gonna need to go, if we take a look at the recipe, into another basin, because this is made, the andesite alloy, by mixing andesite cobblestone with the brick, which is what we're making on the depot right here. So let's pray that this works. It does, nice. It looks a little bit wonky, but it does work. And this is going to be the same thing that we had over here. It's just going to use lava instead of using water. So again, the mixer can go through glass and we're just going to need to work our way up here and we can put the lava down here and then we're going to have to put down our encased fan. Did I seriously dump all of my encased fans? Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, the mixer can get put down right over here already. And then yes, I did in fact dump all of my encased fans. Wow, I am so bad at dealing with how much stuff we need for this. Okay, well, we are going to put the encased fan down right here and then rotate it so it's facing the correct direction. And then I think I am just going to, I should have put my lava down first, but uh, it's slow moving. We will sack some of the glass so that we can put this down. Oh my gosh, we're gonna need to dirt. I totally messed that up. There we go. Okay. So that will cook it down once, of course, the rotational power is supplied. And then we are going to have to set the filter real quick to be the brick form. So that is the only thing that goes into this basin. So other than supplying rotational power to this, we have all the stuff that we need to get all the way up to making the andesite alloy. So if we look in here, technically we are done with the clay automation, we are done with the algal blend automation, which it still wants us to have some of the blend right now. We can make some of that to complete this technically, I guess, uh, manually, since we have that over here. So we have clay and we have kelp. So let's just manually complete that for the sake of it being done. There we go. Look at that guy, so impressive. So now we need to, this is done. So last part that we're at is now the 
what is that called? The Algocyte Mixer, which is going to require us to make our contraption for automating the production and collection of andesites. So that one's going to be a little bit more of a chore. So I'm going to collect all the stuff that we need for that. And then we're going to head down to Bedrock and do a little bit of work. Okay, guys, so it has been a while since my last clip because there's a lot of work I had to do to get us in a position to start setting this up. So as you can see, I am down here at bedrock roughly below where we set up the kelp farm and all that. Now, you might be wondering what this is right here, and this is actually a very cool idea of vertical item transportation without requiring any rotational power, no moving parts, nothing. It's been in Create for a long time, so I just think it's a creative use of game mechanics, let's call it. Um, I saw this posted by someone on Reddit and figured this would be a great use for it. So basically, it is just a barrel with a funnel and then another funnel, and it just literally chucks the items up from one to the next to the next all the way up and that will literally put it into our basin so really our goal right now is simply to get our andesite cobblestone into this barrel now an important thing for us to check is basically eventually are we producing only andesite cobblestone or does this potentially make other things and andesite cobblestone when lava forms stone over bedrock is just one of the options if that's the case we're going to need to use one of the brass funnels on here to make sure that this works properly but we need to set up the drill area over here first and so Basically, we're going to have a portable storage interface here, dumping the items into the barrel. Obviously, this is a lot higher than I would like it, but we've got bedrock down here blocking access to where the other barrel would be. So we're going to make do with what we've got. And I just care that this has one bedrock to generate andesite cobblestone on. So we are going to put down our mechanical bearing and this will eventually get rotational power coming down through this little portion of the shaft right here all the way from up there. I just need to run a bunch of shafts down here, but we're going to want the drill to be right here and it's going to spin over this one and this one. So there's two areas for it to generate in. Then we are going to want our lava to be right here in the central block. We're not going to care about what's here or what's here. Unfortunately, the lava is just probably going to spill out over there. And then we need our bearing to be right up there. So let's grab this out and it needs to be one higher than where our portable storage interface is. So we're going to put our bearing right there. Then we're going to put our radial chassis all the way down and these will connect to each other like that. And then we're going to put our where is it our barrel right there. We should make this sticky first, though. So put our barrel right there. So that'll just be storage for this, just like a chest. But I have it on hand. That one's going to be set to two. The rest of these aren't sticky, so they don't matter, except this one, which we set to one and then we'll make it sticky. No, that's way too low. We actually I don't know why I brought it down that low. We do not need that one. That's where the lava is going to go. We need this one to be sticky, I believe, and this to be set to one. And then we're going to take out our drill. We only need one. Again, this is probably going to be fast enough, but this when it spins should then break, I believe what forms down here where my head is. So it would kill me right now if it was running. So we need to then kind of block this off appropriately and we need to get the water and lava down so that it forms. So we need to place it so that the water we're going to use stairs. Let's get right back here. So we'll do stair right here so that the lava flows into the water. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. And these are the only two sides that matter. So come back one more over here. This looks so horrible, but this is thankfully not going to be visible to us at all. So we're going to waterlog this. We're going to waterlog that. And then we can just kind of cover it up so it doesn't spill out. We can fill these in right here. And then we're going to eventually cover this up, too, so the lava doesn't spill out. We can cover this up right here. OK, time to waterlog these. Do I only have one bucket of water? Did I seriously not bring a second one? Oh, my gosh, I'm an idiot. OK, well, let's see if this even works. So we waterlog this. Uh, you know, let's waterlog this one. So if we waterlog that and then we place down our lava right here, I just want to see if it forms andesite. So let's watch it spill. It does. OK, if this were to rotate, then it should pick that up. 
the portable storage interface would rotate with it. And then when it reaches here, it'll connect to this one and dump it there. So all I need to do is waterlog this right here and bring down some rotational power to get our mechanical bearing up there running. And it should be good to send andesite up to the surface. So I'm going to go take care of all that right now by running the rotational power down and bringing some more water down. And then we should be able to see this in action and be getting our andesite alloy fully made up at the surface. Okay, guys, so I have the setup running down here. It's working flawlessly, except for one thing, and it's what I was afraid of, which is the fact that there are multiple types of cobblestone that form down here. And so we just got lucky the first two times that it was andesite, but I guess it's, whoops, that's not what I wanted. I guess it's just a chance of andesite cobblestone forming. So we need to deal with that. And the way I'm going to deal with it that should work is by setting a filter on a brass funnel here so that only andesite can go up. Now, I think the we'll have to do also is set another filter so that we can. Yeah, so the andesite goes up. These will sit in here. Now, my question is, and I know sometimes they have priority, but since it's going to unload one at a time, I don't know if we need another filtered one or if we can just use an andesite funnel off the side here to dump it into something like lava, because eventually they will clog up this system and we don't want them. So I'm suspecting I'm going to have to come back down here with an item filter on another brass one off to the side and put every other type or basically blacklist andesite to say everything that's not andesite come out this side and then dump it into lava because I don't care about those. But either way, we should be at least getting some andesite cobblestone going up to the surface. This is working. And so this portion should in fact be complete. So if we go back up there in a second, we should have andesite alloy being made in our system. And that means that all that's left to do is quickly set up a tree farm and then get the deployers going to make our kinetic mechanisms. Okay, guys, so I did a little bit of work after I got things situated. As you can see, we have the system running over here. We have andesite being kicked off the end here, so I got to make sure I don't let that go to waste, but everything's working perfectly. And so we still need to set up the tree farm, and that's going to be coming in a second, but I wanted to figure out where that stuff needed to go, and it ends up being like this. So right here, we are pulling out the andesite alloy. It's coming up one, and then it's going to eventually get pushed into hoppers, which will put it into the deployers. And we're just going to use two in a row because this will basically push out the slabs that uh, we're making from the wood that will be sawed three times to get from the logs to the slabs and there'll be an abundance of them. So we're going to have the buffer chest right here. They'll be pulled out one at a time, one, two, and then a third deployer, which will go right here if it wants to orient properly. Let's see. Nope. How did I get these to orient properly down here? Let me let me hop my way up here. I think when I came from the top, they worked perfectly. Is that one? Yep, there we go. So we're only going to have to bring rotation in one side. They should all power each other. I'm thinking we might need some more water wheels soon. If this is all running, it's probably going to end up being overstressed, but maybe I'll hook these up to what I hooked the tree farm up to later. But this one will have the saw in it. I don't think I have it in my inventory right now, but we need to handle the fact that we need andesite going to both of these. And that's very easy with brass tunnels. So all we're going to do is put one here and one here. They're both going to only have to worry about andesite, but then we need to change the setting on this. So uh, when multiple outputs are available, split it. They're only going to be coming out one at a time. So we want round robin, which means that if we were to toss down a couple of these, it should go one, 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 throw down another one. It should come out this one right here. And yep, so then all we need to do would be take some andesite funnels, and it's looking like I only have one available right now, but those will go into the hoppers right here. So uh, I need to get a second one, and I don't know if I have the stuff ready to make one over here. Um, yeah, so we've got the kinetic mechanisms, we've got the andesite casing, so we should be good to do that. I am so excited. We are getting so close to it being fully automated. So we'll do this funnels, get those uh, inventory space. Oh my gosh, I need to make a backpack, but we put that up there and now we can verify that it does in fact fully work since again, they're going to be coming out one at a time. 
So let's just test it out. We should end up with one in this hopper and one in the other hopper. There we go. And they are both in the hands of these deployers now. So if we were to put a slab in here and put the saw for just proof of concept real quick, where is it? It's over here, isn't it? Saw right here. We got some slabs right here. So let's put the saw in the hands of this bad boy, right? It doesn't have rotational power up there though. So these are not going to work. Wow. Well, that's truly a shame. I can get rotational power up there in a little bit, but now I'm going to get stuff prepped. We will set up the tree farm. We will get it hooked up to this. I'll probably get stuff set up so that we can finish it off really quick when I come back and that'll be it. And this is going to have been like two, three hours of recording. So I don't know how much I'll be able to cut it down to, but I'm hoping it'll be sub 40 minutes. I don't know, it, but I'm hoping. Okay. So we are into the final portion of the setup, the tree farm. And I've kind of based it off of where the rest of this setup is, as I mentioned to you guys, and I crafted a bunch of stuff. So hopefully we will be able to hook all this up right on camera right now. I'm saying that again, I'm probably going to regret it. My inventory is a mess, but let's get out our saws because those are the first thing we need to base this off of. So the saws will be going into this chest right here. So we need to place them down and rotate them. So they are like that. Yes. Nice. And then another one. And, uh, nope, like that, uh, oh my gosh, there we go. I don't know how to properly rotate these, goodness. Um, there we go. Okay, so all three. So this is going to strip the logs, cut them down into planks, and then cut them down into slabs. Now, we need to set the filter for this one because there's a lot of recipes this one could be. So we need to make sure that's slabs. And then finally, because they're just going to be slabs, we can just put an andesite funnel into there. And we need to have a funnel outputting things onto this one. So we're going to make that a brass funnel because this is going to be pulling from a chest, which I don't have. <laughs> oh, my God. OK, please tell me that I have some logs over here. I do that I can use. Nice. OK, we'll make two chests. Hopefully that's enough. That should be one for our setup and one for right here. So we're going to put down something we can build on top of right here, chest, put down our brass funnel right here, have it outputting. And then we need to set the output specifically to oak logs. So I don't know why I have an extra stack of torches, but let's just, nope, I gotta dump this whole thing, get an oak log real quick so that we can set. Did I already have oak logs on me? I did, oh my gosh. Well, I'm sorry, tree. You know what? I'll put your, your base back. <laughs> okay. So we're going to set it for a Oak log to come out of here. And I think it needs to be just one at a time. It might automatically do that, but either way, I'm going to set it to one because these have the option of pulling out full stacks. Then we are going to put down a hopper into this right here. And so we have the hopper right here, and then we need to put down our portable storage interface. Where is it on top of this? So right here, and then this is going to connect with the portable storage interface on our setup, which I was going to have centered right here, but I'm actually thinking I need to move it back one. So let's just collect this dirt right here. And then we are going to place it down right here. So then we're going to put down our mechanical bearing, our final one of the episode that is going to go right here. Great. And then we're going to put down our radial chassis on top. Another one on top of that. Slime balls make the sides sticky over here. Top is going to be a chest and a portable storage interface. So right like that, right like this, we'll rotate this to be the correct direction. There we go. We'll set that to be two. Also set this one to be two. Now I do need to start bringing rotational power over here because I need to see which way this way this one's going to rotate before we put down our saws. So I do think I'm actually going to cut real quick and get rotational power from here because I added on an extra water wheel to these deployers up here to these saws and then to this and make sure we do in fact have enough rotational power. If not, I'll add another water wheel somewhere and then we can hop back and finish setting this up. Okay, guys. So all the rotational power is hooked up. We can see that this over here is all connected. I have a belt over there to power all of these. These are hooked up up here with a weird just mess of gearboxes. I don't know if that's the most efficient, but it gets the job done. 
and this is where the tree farm is. You can see that I actually tested it out and it's already producing the kinetic mechanisms on its own, which is great, uh, but I wanted to make sure it all worked properly. But what we need to do is stop this now. So we need to break this right here just so we know the way it spins and we need to add on our deployers to replant the saplings and then we need to add on our mechanical saws. So the mechanical saws will be going right here and right here. And then we need our final radial chassis on the top layer to replant these. And the nice thing is, if you didn't know, the deployers do not care that there's blocks here or here, especially once the contraption starts moving. So we just now need to rotate that so it's pointing down, rotate that so it's pointing down, and we should go grab some saplings so it can start planting these. And so we can set the filter. And then I think I have bone meal in here somewhere so we can verify that it works. I have bones. So I should probably crush these down, but uh, I don't really care. So <laughs> we're just going to run with it. So let's, oh, it's almost nighttime too. Perfect time for us to finish up here. So we're going to set the filter for these. We're going to put our oak saplings in here. So it should plant all of them when we start it up again. And I think that's pretty much it. This is set to sticky to two. Not that it really matters, but that should pretty much be everything. So then if we were to put this here, yep, it starts planting them. Nice. As you can see, it doesn't need the or doesn't use the corners. Now, I might need to make this three, but you can see it's dumping all the saplings here. Now, that is something that people always are concerned about where it dumps out all the saplings. How's it going to replant them? I promise you, eventually it will cut down a tree right once it finishes here. So any saplings, ugh, any saplings that are like left right here will eventually get replanted. So uh, it does work. So now I just need to bone meal up a tree not put a torch on it and we can verify that this whole setup works. Now I will need to filter out the apples and the sticks and the saplings from here. But for now, all we care about because we do have a chest there as a buffer is that this is working. So the tree farm is working. It's cutting them and we should probably hop across here so that we can see it finish up. And then we're going to need to put down a chest right here eventually that will collect all of them with an andesite funnel. But you can see it's working. It stops the process at each portion. And there we go. The kinetic mechanism automation is fully functioning. It is complete. Oh my God, I am so exhausted after doing all that. I know it was probably a crazy long episode, guys. I am going to, uh, do we have any logs left? I don't know. Where is our axe? I'm just going to cut down two logs off one of these. I'm just going to cut down this tree right here. This birch tree. It's a birch tree. It deserves to go. We're going to make our final, final craft of the episode with birch logs into a chest. And this chest plus this andesite funnel. We're going to take a nap first. Those are going to be the storage area for our finished kinetic mechanisms so right here and then right there and i think that they should not enter this until they're done oh that's not what we wanted i don't think they should enter this until they're complete even though they look like they're very close yep so eventually we'll need to make sure that there's an additional saw ready to go in here but the diamond saw has 2000 extra uses on it and i believe it gets used less when it's in a sequenced assembly than crafting but look at this. It is going and going. These have not gotten a backlog in them yet, but uh, they probably have like 30 or so in them so far. So like I said, there will be limiting factors in here. Certain parts of this system are not as fast as others. We'll probably have an overabundance of logs in the end, and we'll probably have an overabundance of uh, kelp at least. But it's looking like andesite cobblestone is probably going to be the limiting factor here. So... We'll just have to work around that eventually. Maybe I'll make more. I don't know, but we're probably not going to need too many kinetic mechanisms past what this is capable of making in the end. So I am super happy with how this turned out, guys. And I think the last thing to do before we end off the episode is complete these. So I do need to oh, I do need to get all these so I can complete them. So we need to strip a log, which means we need to just grab one from over here or something uh and go through this process so we need to strip one of these logs i should have just stripped it while it was there strip a log get that okay that's done next one making planks so we'll just make this into planks 
There we go. Uh, nope, that's done. And then finally our slabs, that is done. And we have a saw, but I guess I have to grab it out of here, which is kind of annoying. So let me just grab that out of there. That is done. Let's put that back in there. Okay, none of them made it through. Good. Uh, and then this right here is complete. And we grab this out. We are done, which means chapter one is complete. So that is such a good feeling. Now we can move on to chapter two, which if we take a look at it, looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. I apologize if it sounded like I was trying to rush through things, not explaining stuff, kind of jumping around. But that's the name of the game when we're trying to finish an expert pack quickly and doing it all on camera. So yeah, if you guys have any questions about this stuff, feel free to post it in the comments. But let me know if you enjoyed the kind of large scale quest completion in this episode, or if you'd prefer for it to be broken down more and not cover so much. Obviously, I still want to finish it fast, but either way, I'm not going to ramble at the end of this episode. You already spent probably like close to an hour with me when I end up editing this and try to cut it down. So I appreciate you guys sticking around if you did till the end. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on future ones as they come out every Monday and Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also drop a like for the amount of effort that went into this one. Um, but I will talk to you guys later. Seriously, right as I'm about to record a video, you guys have to show up. Oh my God.